the, the general approach to that topic or the most successful approach is, of course, to speak more about health, mental mm. health, but also physical health within a company. Hi, and welcome to Lead Well. This is the second part of my conversation with Dr. Simon Senner. Simon is a psychiatrist and psychotherapist, and he's very actively involved in mental health issues in the workplace. So I hope you enjoy this second part of our conversation. That brings us to the next part, talking about, well, what can the company do? What can a leader do to actually make sure that the team is staying healthy? And will stay productive because we've heard if they are not healthy, they cannot be productive in the long run. Yeah, I think like, first of all, you, you need a intrinsic motivation of the company to tackle that topic. So mm -hmm. some companies, they have a look on their absent days and see, okay, mental health problems at work actually really cost us. For example, like if you have a company with around 1,000, 2,000 employees, it's going to be uh, in the millions already per mm -hmm. year that is costing you the presence of mental health problems. And so you need to find your motivation or you, you say, okay, I have to care for my employees and this is why we are implementing this and that. So, and for example, like what, what most companies do, and I think that also makes sense. I mean, leaders and managers are actually usually the closest to their employees and they also see if an employee is changing if there's a delta yeah if mm -hmm. someone you could rely on for the last three four years and now he's making more and more mistakes or he's coming in late so his work output is changing in mm -hmm. a bad way yeah mm -hmm. or for example when you have a depression when you have an anxiety disorder his work performance will go down but also mm -hmm. the other way so there is one big exception from that usually in every mental health uh, disorder the work performance is going down mm -hmm. it's going worse and worse and worse but in burnout it is actually the other way around so in the beginning of a burnout you intend to, to work more and more and more and more and more so first of all as a manager I could be really happy with such an employee because he works a lot he maybe even works for two yeah mm -hmm. Uh, the problem now is um, that I have to reflect that what happens if I keep on keep on letting him do this, this because he will not be able to do that forever and I have to intervene. So it's really important to actually train managers in how to do that because mm -hmm. that's not easy. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of managers that are really, really super good in what they are doing. They are really professional specialists. But when I ask them, what or how do you address a mental health problem? They are sometimes really speechless. They don't know what to say. I mean, usually they want to do the right thing, but mm -hmm. they don't know really how, because mental health is such a complicated topic. And, 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 and isn't it also stigmatized? I mean, that's something we don't talk about. Yeah, it's it's really stigmatized and like like the, the the general approach to that topic or the most successful approach is of course to speak more about health, mental mm -hmm. health, but also physical health within a company. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the main approach. If I can speak up, if I can open up about my own problems, then it makes it more likely that I get supported in the right way. So actually, if you train managers, and this is what most companies actually start doing, and mm -hmm. this is also what we do at Brainswork, for example, is in train them how to, first of all, recognize a mental health problem, because it's not that easy if uh, an employee comes into the office and he has a, a, broken, a broken arm or a arm and a white plaster. It's pretty obvious what, what's the problem. Yeah. So he, his arm is broken and I go and address it and say, hey, did you fall off your bike? Did you break your arm? Question mark. Mm -hmm. So that it's easy to approach certain physical health conditions. But when we come to mental health and if I only have a bad feeling that someone 
changed a little bit, yeah, and he seems to be depressive, but I don't know, should I really address it or not? Is it private? a private problem? Is it really, should I really go into that, um, into, uh, in, into that privacy or not? Mm -hmm. This is something, but that you can also learn on how to do that and how to approach it right. And then of course, also in how to support your employee in a right way. And then we also for, of course, have to talk about the topic of prevention because preventing mental health problems is as well possible. Yeah. I mean, it's quite good. Once you had your burnout, then you change something afterwards, mm. but of course the way better approach is to change something beforehand. Yeah, but actually, yeah. that is much harder. <laughs> it, it is. And we will talk about what each individual can do. What is the thing that a manager can do? And I asked that question because there were some elements that I found really interesting and that are not so evident. For example, express your concern as a manager. Can you say more about how to structure a conversation with a, an employee that you are concerned about? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you need a good trust relationship between you and, and your employee. That is, of course, really important. And I mean, I personally think the 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 best way or maybe the only way of being a leader is is really living what you are telling. So once you open up and say, I had this episode in my career five years ago where I was close to a burnout or where I had problems or this and that then it makes it much more likely that also your employees will open up so mm -hmm. that that basic principle of trust needs to be there if you don't have that you can for, forget the whole process afterwards mm. wow. Wow. Uh, so starting with that is an essential i would say okay well, so that's okay that's great that's a prerequisite really to then be able to open up so speaking about great managers who was the best manager that you ever worked with and what made him or her so great? Actually, I remembered it was like maybe four or five years ago. I was in a in a Japanese company and I was doing like a workshop with managers about yeah, burnout, about mental health at the workplace. And it was my first workshop at this company and it was also my first Japanese company. And I heard that, okay, the Japanese work culture is really different to, to the German one. And mm -hmm. you work, you live for your company. And I knew that in, right in my first round, I had one manager who was leading like 500 employees and he was quite high in that company. And I was really like, yeah, to be honest, a little bit afraid of what he will think and what how, how he would comment on, mm -hmm. on, on, our, on our topics. And actually... Like when I start, I always do a small introduction round and he was the third person like introducing himself. And mm -hmm. actually I was, I was super lucky because he really opened up and he said, okay, I, I came to, to Germany one, one, 1.5 years ago. And actually I, I was on that really difficult topic there and I had new employees. I didn't know the culture. I was only working 16 hours a day and uh, my family was back in Japan and I didn't know anyone. I didn't speak the language. And after uh, eight months doing this, I found myself in a psychiatric ambulance over the weekend. Wow. And he was really opening up and he was totally burned out and went into treatment on in any in with an English uh, psychotherapist uh, there in Frankfurt. And yeah, then he was yeah telling about his story and how he could mm. find his way back to work and that of course was the best thing that could happen to my workshop because then afterwards all the other managers they also opened up and they said okay if even my boss was in that situation mm. they also opened up about their smaller maybe smaller smaller things and that i was really impressed by that because i didn't expect that at all i mm -hmm. thought he will just uh, try to pretend to be only tough and only has endless power and so on. And yeah. I, I really have respect for that if people and also like showing I was a high achiever. I was I was on a good performance level. Then I had a dip. I had an episode. And afterwards. I could mm -hmm. go almost back to normal or I could mm -hmm. I could again be a good manager and I was 
again in a high position and so and that 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 is a good message i think mm -hmm. to others yeah and is this something that you're seeing more often that the patients that are treated in your clinic that they can go back into their original work or do, do you track what they're doing after yeah, of course, we, we, we track and we also have programs for that that's called supported employment, where we try to bring in people also with more severe mental health problems back back to work in, a, in normal companies, like in a normal um, work environment, but they maybe need a certain level of support afterwards. So what I find quite often is that when employees opened up, maybe a little bit said, I need, I had psychiatric help in the last few mm -hmm. weeks where I wasn't at work and they come back and speak to their manager, the manager automatically thinks, okay, okay, maybe he is not back to hundred percent. Now let's, let's put him in like a pink cloud and take all the different difficult tasks away from him and only give him some basic stuff where he can't make any big mistakes. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And that actually might be a really big problem. Of course, okay. sometimes that, that fits quite well because when the employee says, okay, I'm not back at 100% at the moment, please give me only basic task. Please get away the difficult decisions from me. Mm -hmm. Then it is the right approach. Mm -hmm. But a lot of my patients, for example, if you have a depression, a dep having a depression means I feel like a loser. I think I can't be productive anymore. So, and if you come back after a successful treatment in, in the clinic, in hospital, for example, or after a successful psychotherapy, and you come back to work and nobody will give you work where mm -hmm. you can really succeed in, mm -hmm. then you will never, ever make the learning anymore that actually I thought I'm a loser, but actually I succeeded in that task. And my colleagues were saying, hey, Simon, you did really well. Mm -hmm. That can actually really help to bring me out of my depression mm -hmm. uh, in the long term. But you, yeah, you need to be trusted to also make that experience again. Yeah. As you said, the trust between the leader and the employees is really key there as well. That's great. Thank you. So when we talk about the individual, you said it's great when you learn from a burnout or you learn from going through a depression, how to tackle your life afterwards. But wouldn't it be great? to be able to prevent such thing to happen. So what can we do? What can every single one of us do to prevent that? Are there any signs that we need to look for? Anything that we can do? So what's your take on that? Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> what, what can we do to prevent or uh, getting a mental health problem? Mm. And uh, I think the, the first conclusion we have to make for our own is pretty much all of us, we all know that preventing or, or by eating healthy, by doing sports, by reducing your body weight, by not smoking, yeah, we can mm. re reduce our risk to get a stroke mm -hmm. or a heart attack. Yeah, so mm -hmm. a lot of somatic diseases are actually preventable mm -hmm. and the funny fact is the risk of getting a mental health problem is also preventable mm -hmm. you know? but it is not maybe that easy or it, it doesn't lie in front of us what mm -hmm. we have to do. and prevention of mental health problems can uh, can be looked at from three different angles like there is the angle of a company what what does a company have to do or what can a company actually do and in at least in germany or um, in a lot of uh, other western countries uh, for example in germany we have a law that tells um, companies that they have to live by the law of Arbeitsschutz, yeah, mm -hmm. so, and that That's means good. that means it's it it is not a matter of am I willing to do something or am I not willing to do something, as 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 much as you have to care for physical harms at the workplace, for example, mm -hmm. heavy tools that can fall on my feet, you as well have to look for 
psychological treats on the on the health of my employees so mm -hmm. that is from from a company's perspective there you can make of course surveys look where are my problems you can look up how, how are my uh, absence days uh, due to mental health problems how are they compared to other companies yeah there are really good reports where you can get really good data mm -hmm. and the second approach is the approach of healthy leadership mm -hmm. then of course as a manager i can lead my my employees in many different ways yeah and mm -hmm. there is also one one way that is called uh, healthy leadership so how how do i lead my employees in a way so afterwards i can i can say okay for the health for the physical health for the mental health of my employees i did most the most mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. and then of course each one of us has to also look for himself that's mm -hmm. the third way on the individual level. What can you do on an individual level? And here as well as a manager, I mean, you will only take the energy and the motivation to go into those really not so easy discussions with an employee. Yeah, talking about a mental health problem is not an easy discussion. So it's, it's, it's really hard for a few, for, for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And but you will only do that extra effort if you are compensated yourself at least plus minus yeah if myself if i'm close to burnout yeah i will never ever have the energy to support others so i have to look what i can do for myself and these what i can look for myself what i can do for myself it's actually quite yeah quite quite easy things yeah like sleeping well exercise regularly do for do breaks yeah i mean the 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 harming fact of stress is like if i have punctual stress yeah some stress peaks within the week or within my day it doesn't harm my health at all the problem is ongoing stress without any breaks and learn how to do breaks learn how to come down from a stressy situation and how to relax. Um, that is something that you can actually really learn. That's something that is active, that you can uh, try out different techniques. And that is also something that is really effectful. Yeah, and what I always emphasize as well is that it's not to calm down, not to do a yoga session once a week for half an hour. It's really on a regular basis and make sure, as you said, not, not staying on this constant stress. Wow. So what are you personally doing to stay healthy? Because you're a pretty, pretty busy person as well. Yeah, that's, that's a, an important question. So I, I, at least for myself, I learned how, or I, I'm always constantly learning, but I, I, I try to really go in, into that deeper. And I learned what are the signals, what are the signs of my body that are showing me it's close to 12 o'clock. Yeah, so for example, my red eyelid is starting to flicker. So I have small muscle contractions here. And if that happens, if I get this, yeah, I end all discussions and then I stop immediately and try to recover right away. I'm recovering actually quite well being being in on the water, water sports. So if I have more time, <laughs> of course, that doesn't uh, happen during a normal daily or during the time in the hospital very often but so i try to to be surfing on the water uh, as often as possible so that gives me quite a lot of energy for the weeks uh, thereafter but if that happens during the day i stand I, I i stand up right away and i go for a walk here in the just opposite of my office i have a quite we have a quite nice forest and i just go in there and try to at least be 10 minutes for, for my own and and then I start slowly by doing some calls uh, with my mobile phone, with my headphones and keep keep on walking. And then usually after 20 minutes, 25 minutes, that was already enough of a break. But sometimes you need that two times, three times a day or sorts of active relaxation. Also doing this, I do um, so, some small meditation exercises now and then and it also helps me quite a lot and then of course yeah finding something that you love doing is really important i mean um, and what i love doing is not only like treating uh, patients in a hospital 
but also i mean that that is of course that makes sense that is that gives me a lot of uh, energy but as well i really love to see the other uh, the other contributing parts and that is of course mental health at the workplace how can we live in a in a in a world and in companies how do we have to structure company management techniques that contribute positively on our health and that motivates me if if I have a patient from a company I was already talking to or where where maybe know, okay, the managers in that company, they are trained, they know what to do. And if we treat that, that uh, person here in our hospital and he's going back to work and I know, okay, they will understand the situation a little bit better. They will, they know what to do now. And, and then I think, okay, I have a good feeling on charging that patient. And I think then his, yeah his further uh, further steps are going to be much more likely it's happening in a much more positive way wow that's great so paying attention to early signs really reacting immediately taking a walk maybe doing mindfulness exercise and i think the underlying note that i'm hearing is oh yeah do the work you like and enjoy what you're doing that helps as well yeah of oh. course <laughs> wow. uh, and i wish oh. that anyone could could have that sort of work of course but sometimes it's just not happening because there is there is work that needs to be done that is not super meaningful and super exciting yeah and i know that but yet in those kind of work situations you can also yeah bring in measures that 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 help promoting your health even though you have to do repetitive small stuff every day all over so really making the best out of it and finding also the good thing in the small things that we're doing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow, Simons, I I could uh, I could go on for hours talking to yeah, you. Yeah, so me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So I thank you so much. Thank you for being our guest and uh, for all your expertise and your your insights. I look forward to staying in touch because I love the work you're doing and we haven't even talked about Nilo Health. That should probably be another episode because I have experienced that as well. So it's it's an, an app-based setup where companies can become a member and then employees can reach out for also individual therapy sessions. And I, I trialed that and it was really interesting and really helpful as a, as a first step into a therapy. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah, you can check it out on nilo.health on, or on my management training site, brains-work.com. And I think, yeah, a lot of our companies are more and more coming into overall situations with the lack of good stuff of new applicants that are missing. And you have to deal with the employees that you have. You have to keep them healthy. You need to rely on them and, and be sure that the people that you have in your company, they stay healthy on the long run. And that is the most uh, successful approach for also your company's future. And this is where, for example, Nilo could help and support a lot. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much again. And thank you, everyone. And for our listeners, as you know, may you always lead well yourself and others. Thank you. Yeah, you can, you can, you are open to comment, I think, in the comment sections or give, write us an email if you have questions concerning uh, this topic. Thanks. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. This was Lead Well. Now, what is the one thing that you're taking away from this episode? Please share in the comments below and do share the podcast with your friends and family, but only if you like it.